name is Kaylee and I'm a graduate student at the Natural History Museum in the Division of Invertebrate Zoology, which means I study animals that don't have a backbone. For today's Discovery Day, I'm really excited to talk about one of my favorite group of invertebrates with truly amazing adaptations, and that's the tapeworms. Now, tapeworms are parasites, which means they're animals that live inside other animals, which we call hosts. And in particular, the tapeworms that I study live inside the intestines of sharks and rays. As I'm sure you can imagine, living inside other animals has led tapeworms to evolve really awesome and unique adaptations. One of the coolest things about tapeworms is that they don't have a head. That means they don't have eyes, ears, noses, or mouths. Instead, they have a structure called a scolex that they use to grab on to the intestine of their hosts. Here are two different types of pictures of the attachment organ, or scolex, of a new species of tapeworm from stingrays that I got to describe. Both pictures are of the same species of tapeworm, just taken with two different kinds of microscopes. The picture on the left was taken with a light microscope, and the picture on the right was taken with a really fancy big microscope called a scanning electron microscope that allows us to get really cool 3D pictures of whatever we put inside. You can see that the attachment organ in this tapeworm is really well adapted for hanging on in the intestine. It has four suckers and a muscular flower-shaped part at the top. One of the names we gave this new species is Corolopex, which means flower top in Latin. Another really cool adaptation that's unique to tapeworms is that they don't have a digestive system. You and I, like most animals, we have a complete digestive system with a mouth and a stomach and an intestine, but tapeworms don't have any of that. Because they live inside the guts of a host, their host has already done the hard work of finding and digesting food for them. They just have to hang out and absorb sugars directly across their body wall. Because tapeworms use their body wall to absorb nutrients, they have really special adaptations to allow them to do this really well. Remember Corolopex, the species of tapeworm from a stingray that we talked about earlier? If we use the scanning electron microscope to look up close at the body wall of Corolopex, we can see what I'm talking about. Like all tapeworms, the body surface of Corolopex is covered with tiny elaborations of the surface that help to increase surface area that allow Corolopex to absorb nutrients more efficiently. They may also help the tapeworm hang on in the intestine, another one of their amazing adaptations. Most tapeworms, including the ones I study that parasitize sharks and rays, are pretty small, which means we need to use a microscope like this one in order to see them. Here's a microscope slide with a tapeworm from a stingray. As you can see, it's really tiny. It's even smaller than this penny that's sitting next to the slide. So today, I'm going to teach you how to make your own microscope at home so that you can see the hidden world of tiny stuff around you. Here's what you'll need to build your own microscope at home. Two pencils, clear tape, a plastic pipette or a syringe, water, a blank sheet of paper or a white surface to build your microscope on top of, and something small, flat, and interesting to magnify. If you want, you can use a handheld magnifying glass to make the image from your microscope appear even larger. If where you're building your microscope isn't very bright, you may also need to use a flashlight. Start by taking a clear piece of tape, cutting it about two to three inches long, and then wrapping the ends around each of your two pencils. You'll want to make sure you leave about an inch to two inches of space between the pencils where the tape is nice and clear and pulled tight between them. Make sure there's enough room for your specimen. Next, you'll take your syringe or your plastic pipette and pull up a little bit of water. Add a drop or two of water to the middle of your tape so it forms a nice bead without any bubbles. You may need to experiment with adding more or less water to your drop. Once you're ready, slowly push your specimen underneath the tape and between the two pencils until it falls directly underneath the drop. You should be able to see that looking at the specimen through the drop of water creates a lens that magnifies what you're seeing. Well done, you've made an at-home microscope.